Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today, in honor of Canada's 150th birthday, I thought I would do a Canada 150 art journal page. Now, I created this stencil, and this is the official symbol for Canada 150. And what I did was, I did an image search on Google for it. This is what it looks like. And I had my Cricut cut this out. Um, but when I cut it out, it left me with this. So I decided to make it a little bigger and make it a stencil and see how that works out. Um, so I'm going to start with my background and I've already adjusted my pages. And I'm going to do this um, right in the center of the page. And I'm going to use bioxide inks for this. And I'm just going to use a variety of colors. So I'm going to get out um, Broken China. Well, I see my camera is sort of uh, trying to focus on things, so I'm going to turn off the autofocus. Give me just a second here. That should be off. Okay. And uh, let's see. Maybe some... No, I don't think worn lipstick. Um, definitely wilted violet. And cracked pistachio and fired brick and let's see how about some faded jeans and fossilized amber and spiced marmalade and that's good okay so I'm going to do an intermixture of these colors and see what we come up with so I've got my ink applicators over here so I'm just going to I'll start with the worn or not the worn lipstick because I'm not using that let me see cracked pistachio okay it's the first dabber ink applicator I found so I'm just gonna just a little because I'm gonna blend the colors and what do we got next here Let's see, fired brick. And wilted violet. And I'm not being too particular about where these are going. Uh, let's see. What else have I got here? Um, faded jeans. And broken china. I probably should have sprayed this stencil with a little bit of repositionable spray because I usually do, as you know, but I didn't today. And let's go with. Um, fossilized amber. Oops. And let's finish off with a little spiced marmalade. And let's see how well my stencil really worked on all of this. Oh, that looks quite pretty. I like that. So, I'm going to turn it upside down for the other page. I'm going to put it in the center. And I'm going to do the same thing. Um, 
Last time I started with cracked pistachio. It doesn't matter what I start with because I'm not trying to get these in exactly the same order. They're going to be all over the place. So. And fired brick. Wilted violet. China. And some faded jeans. And fossilized amber. And let's finish off with spice marmalade. Okay. See how that looks? Yeah, that's kind of cool. I really like that. Okay, but I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to give it a little spritz. And actually, I just want some water marks, so I'm going to spray it on my hand first and just throw it on the page. Yeah, that's probably enough. And let's hit it with the heat dryer. Okay, so my oxide inks on the stencil are all dry now, but I'm thinking I would like uh, a suggestion of a border. And so I'm going to use the same stencil, and I have sprayed it right now with um, some repositionable spray to hold it down. And I'm just focusing on these little triangular parts that are here. And I'm going to use oxide ink again, but I'm going to use fire brick red, because, of course, the two principal colors for our country are red and white, because they're in our flag. So... I think what they're doing with this symbol, having it in multiple colors, is to represent the uh, multiple ethnic groups that we have in our country because we're really made up, as you know, of a lot of different uh, people from a lot of different places in the world. So I think that was the symbolism behind using different colors in the maple leaf. And I think each one of these little spaces on here represent uh, the ten provinces and the three territories as well. Um, that's what I think the symbolism is. I haven't really done any research to find out about that. So now I'm going to add this border and I'm using fire brick red. And I'm putting it on fairly heavily because I want this to be pretty solid. I may or may not go over it with some water later to get that oxidized. Oops, I almost ripped my stencil here. And Move it over and do it here as well. Sorry if I'm a little out of shot. I'm going to do the 
same down here. Now, if you're wondering what I made this stencil out of, it's actually a piece of heavy, um, almost a plastic-like cardstock. Um, I don't know where I got it or what it's called, but it makes a pretty decent stencil. Basically, the first thing I grabbed when I thought of doing the stencil. Now, I've got little bits of pieces coming down off there, but that's okay. I'm not going to worry about it. And I think I'm going to do the same at the other end, so I'll flip this around. I want to keep some white in my background on this page because, again, that's one of the prince, one of the two principal colors in our Canadian flag, red and white. other page. Oops. This by the way are the these are the last two pages in my uh, art journal and so the art journal is pretty much full. So I think I will do a video at one point going through sort of a flip through this journal to see how my my style has changed, if it has changed since I started uh, working in the art journal. And this was really the first art journal that I started, so I'm hoping I will see a, an evolution. Okay. I'm liking that. All right. Now, here's the question. Do I spritz it with a little water? And I think I am going to, just to keep it consistent with everything else. probably enough water. So I'm going to dry this and then I'll be back. So before adding more wet medium to this, I know that these oxide inks will be uh, reactivated as soon as any wet medium hits them and I don't want them to run any more than they already have. So I'm going to protect them with some of Tim Holtz's Distress Micro Glaze. Um, this is like a wax and you don't need a lot of it and you can just apply it with your ink applicator and uh, actually the bottle is very conveniently um, designed because it'll fit one of these little foam pads right in there and you can just leave it in and just pull up your your uh, with your ink applicator pull it out and away you go now you don't need a lot of this but you just wipe it around Now I've picked up, whoa, that's not what I really expected it to do. This is not supposed to do that, but it has. Well, I'm just going to go with it because what it's doing is it's actually picking up, and maybe because I've got gesso on this page, but um, it's picking up color, and I didn't want it to pick up color. Ooh, yeah, okay. I'm not going to panic. Let's just go with it. Because I'm going to put something over on top of this. And so let's give it a, a little mottled effect. 
but that was not what I was expecting at all. So, enough microglaze, and I'm just going to take a paper towel, and I'm just going to sort of buff this. Because as I said, it's like a wax, but you can stamp over top of it, you can add other mediums over top of it, but whatever's underneath it should be protected from reactivating with water. Well, we'll see. I could have gone over this with uh, clear gesso. It still would have reactivated it though, um, so you have to be careful as well when you do that. Okay, so what I'm thinking of doing now is I'm going to get a script stamp and I'm just going to stamp it all over both of these pages in just black archival ink. Um, since I'm sort of making this page symbolic, um, I'm thinking about our human rights code in Canada and uh, that's maybe what the script will represent. Um, we are one of the few countries in the world that actually has a formally written uh, human rights code. Um, the Americans have certain human rights that are built into their constitution, but basically in Canada we have many more uh, rights that are protected in this actual document that was created back in the 1980s. So I think that's what I'll use the script stamp for it to be sort of symbolic. Uh, I'm not really trying to be symbolic on this page. Um, However, you know, when you do art journal pages, I guess, in a sense, you could say every art page you ever do is symbolic of something because we're picking things from our brain, from our imagination, from our ideas, and we're trying to say something, whether it's conscious or unconscious. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a script stamp all over this, but i got to find it first, so I'll find it and I'll be back. Okay, so I found one of my go-to uh, script stamps. This is a Tim Holtz one. And this has sort of like old writing that you might find on an old uh, government document. And that's why I picked it. Um, so I'm going to use archival ink, black archival ink, because it's a permanent ink. And it's uh, waterproof. And I'm not using an acrylic block with this because I'm not looking for perfection here. And I'm just going to go So I'm just going to continue this and I'll be back. So I have these cutouts that I made um, that I actually had on my front door uh, yesterday for Canada Today and I thought I'd incorporate these into the art journal page. Um, this might be something a little different than what I usually do. I mean I do, it's not unusual to add an image but these ones are like pre-made images. They're not, I, I download them from the internet. Um, now I'm not sure how to stick these down but I think what I'm going to do is use a collage glue stick for this because I'm really a little bit afraid what might happen if I use matte medium on this. So I'm going to do that. I may have to coat everything with a layer of matte medium afterwards to seal it, um, but we'll see what happens. So I'm just going to move that to the side so I can apply some of this glue stick here. And I'm putting a fairly generous amount on because I really want, don't want the edges to peel up. Oh yeah, this is what I'm afraid of. This is not going to stick well. Okay, we may have to rethink this. 
All right, this glue is not going to work. So I'm going to have to get out my regular white glue and try that. Okay, that looks like it might work, so... And luckily this dries clear as well. I will still go over this, I think, with some uh, matte medium. So now we'll try to get this one stuck down. I'm still going to use the glue stick, and but I'm going to use the other as well. And I think it's because I use that um, distress uh, micro glaze, and. Like I said, it's got kind of a waxy finish to it, and that's probably why the glue stick doesn't want to stick well to this. Fingers are a little bluey. Okay, so I'm going to stick this other one. Sort of mirror images here. Well, not really mirror images, but you know what I mean. Balancing them on either side. So um, you don't need to watch me stick these two pieces down. So I'll pause it here and come back. Okay, so now I have those elements all glued down and I just realized something when I was sort of wiping some of this glue off the excess with a wet baby wipe this is not waterproof that's under here the micro distress glaze did not work um, I don't know why maybe it's because this pages are gessoed the last time I used it I don't think I had gessoed the pages and it worked very well so maybe that's a, a factor so my idea of coating this all with uh, a layer of matte medium I don't think I'm going to do because that's just going to make all of this run under here and I don't want that and I think I have enough glue on them right now they're glued down pretty good I don't think they're going to curl up on me so now I want to add some words here that words that I think uh, go along with uh, our whole Canadian lifestyle and our history and our traditions and things so I found um, some of these that I had from sort of a family uh, heirloom scrapbooking thing so I think I'm going to use these this one's called our history and these already have sticky on the back but I'm just gonna add some more glue to them because I think that'll allow them to, to stay on the page better because of that micro glaze so I think that one will go right up there and I've got one that says tradition and I think I'm gonna put that down in this corner Um, then I have one that says remember when so I think that one I might just overlap over here maybe down here and I have one that says family and I think I'm going to use that because you know in our society, we are kind of very big on family, and Canada has that kind of feel to it, I think, of, that we're all just one big family. Um, 
right there. Okay, now I've got out my Tim Holtz words, and I think I want to find words that are significant again to Canada, and I want to add them all over the place on here. So I just have to determine whether I want to use black or white. May I use a mixture? There's one here that says beautiful. Yep, going to have to use the glue on that, even though these are self-sticking. Oops. Yeah, I hope that's going to stay there. Okay, and what other words do we have in here? Beautiful, beyond believe. Sure, alive, grateful. I think grateful would be good because I think those of us that live in this country are very grateful that this is the country we live in, given what things are like in the world today. Yeah, I hope these little suckers are going to stick here because that microglaze was a mistake. Not that it's a bad product. It's just for this particular page, it's not helping me out. Uh, happiness. Oh, yes, we have to have happiness. Yeah, what else have we got? Hopeful, yes. That is good. Maybe look into the black ones now, put a few of those on. Uh, what else do we have? How about explore? Because our country is so vast. Really. There's so much to see. That it is very much an exploration. have we on here? Discover. Discover goes along with Explore. And what else? Well, I think I'll go through this and find a few more words and then I'll come back. Okay, so I thought these two areas are a little blank looking. I thought I needed to add a, a picture. Um, so I went onto the internet, onto Google, and I searched Canada 150 and I came up with this image and also this. It says we're red, white, and true. And I printed these. First of all, I was going to try and do a transfer technique with packing tape. That didn't work. Um, it just tore it all up. So then I thought about putting it on vellum. But vellum is hard to, to glue down and to get it to stay down. So then I remembered I have some inkjet uh, acetate sheets. They're kind of rough on one side and that's the side that the, the uh, this will print onto. So I've done that and now to stick them down I put, ran them through my little Xyron machine, which if you don't know what a Xyron is, it's basically uh, a machine that allows you to make anything into a sticker. Um, so that's what I have them on now. So I'm just going to peel that backing off and it is clear so no one will see the glue 
and I'm going to put this one right down here. And so the idea is that these are semi-transparent so you can see the underneath part. And the other one, I'm going to stick right up here. And that solves my problem of getting this stuff to stick to the micro glaze, which, you know, that's what I should have done with all of these little words, although I think they're staying stuck down pretty good. Okay, so I think I need a border of some sort. So I grabbed my pit pens, and usually I do a border in white or black. But in honor of Canada Day, I'm going to use red. And... I'm using the pit pens because they'll write pretty much on almost anything because they're India ink. And I think I'm just going to do a squiggly kind of border. So I'm going to do all the way around. So Okay, so I've got that there, and I'm wondering if I need to put anything anywhere else. You know, I don't think so. I think I'm going to leave the page as it is. It's a little different from other pages that I have done, but this one I was doing more kind of scrapbookish. Uh, so art journals can be scrapbook as well. So that's done. I'm done with it, and that's a good way to finish off this uh, art journal. So I hope you like this. And we'll see you later.